Wacom sent me their new Mobile Studio Pro 16 to check out. It is a monster in more ways than one. Let's check it out. Today's video is sponsored by me. Over on my website, I list out all the drawing tech that I've reviewed in order of my preference, making it easier for you to do research. Just type in brad.site and you'll go right to it. Also, full disclosure, the links on that site and in the description below are affiliate links. I get a little bit back every time you click on one of those links and buy something. That's how you guys have been supporting this channel for the last three years, and I want to say thank you. On to the review. We need to talk about the elephant in the room, the horse in the elevator, the bee in the bunt cake. Yeah, we need to talk about the price. The new Mobile Studio Pro 16 is $3,500 US. When I first got the press release, I thought, is this right? Am I looking at the right number here? Is this listed in yen? So with that in mind, it's important to know that I am not the target audience for this, and you probably aren't the target audience for this device either. This is for illustrators and animators who need a lot of horsepower. Folks who are using 3D tools and doing rendering and want something portable that also has pen capability. Maybe if you're streaming your illustrations, need something really fast, that's the market. The price complicates this review a little bit. I loved this product. I really enjoyed using it. This is the best Windows tablet drawing experience I have ever had anywhere. But the real question isn't, is this a good product? The real question is, is this good for a $3,500 product? And that's where I'm getting conflicted. At that price, I don't wanna make any compromises and that's what this review is about. Okay, so what is this thing? The Mobile Studio Pro is a full Windows 10 computer with a touchscreen and Wacom's Pro Pen 2. It's portable, so unlike Wacom's Cintiq, you can draw on this at work and then take it home and draw on it there and then take it to the park and draw on it there and then take it to the dentist and draw on it there. You get the idea. It looks a lot like the old Mobile Studio Pro and that's because it pretty much is. The main difference here is what's inside. The outside changes, they're pretty minor. In the box, you'll find the computer itself, the power supply, which connects via USB-C connector, the a pen, a holder for the pen, a couple extra nibs for the pen, and a pretty nice cleaning cloth. You're also going to find some color rings if you want to add a little flair to your pen, or if you just need to tell it apart from the stylus the guy who sits across from you uses. Oh yeah, and the stand, it's included now. Nice! The screen looks good. It's 4K, 3840 pixels by 2160 pixels. The screen is 85% Adobe RGB. I'm not sure what to make of this. On one hand, 85% may not sound that impressive, especially when other monitors are saying they have 99% sRGB, but the Adobe color range is wider than sRGB, which is why you see that kind of discrepancy. So 85 isn't bad, but Wacom's top of the line Cintiq Pros go up to 99% Adobe RGB. I can only tell the difference when they're sitting next to each other. So normally I would say, hey, the color's just fine. Let's move on. But this is where I have to trot out the price horse. Price, price horse, price, price horse. horse. For the price I'm paying, I want the best screen. I want that 99 99%. Another thing I noticed is that the screen itself doesn't get super bright. By default, it's set to about 50%. When I started using it in the evening in the low light situation, that was fine. But the next day in a bright room with sun pouring in, I had to set it all the way back up to 100 to use it. It was fine once I got it set there, but I wish it would go a little bit brighter. The screen does have a slight matte finish. This is what gives it a little bit of tooth for the stylus when you're drawing. I like drawing on that type of feel. This is pretty normal for Wacom screens. They feel good. It gives you just enough drawing control. One thing to point out, like any matte screen is this isn't going to be as crisp as a glossy screen would be. And if you get in really close, it's grainy. You can see that texture on there. I've seen other reviewers talk about this and say that they don't like that look. And, and I can see why they would say that because it does decrease color accuracy as well. But in general, I would prefer to have that texture for the drawing feel than have those super accurate colors. And that's a trade-off that pretty much every drawing tablet and definitely every Wacom tablet makes. The screen is also a touch screen. This is necessary because there is no keyboard. You can attach a keyboard or use a Bluetooth keyboard if you need it, but I didn't. A on-screen keyboard along with the shortcut buttons along the side were fine for me. This is what sets this apart from the older Mobile Studio Pro, all the computer parts that make it up. First off, you're getting a Core i7-8559U processor. It's one of Intel's eighth generation chips. This processor is where a huge part of the cost of this computer is. You're also adding in the price of Nvidia's Quadro P1000 four gigabytes graphics card. That's a lot of horsepower. That's why I say this isn't for everybody. For an illustrator like me, it's a little bit of overkill. To round out this build, you've got 16 gigabytes of RAM, 
RAM and also a 512 gigabyte SSD drive. And if you want more RAM or bigger hard drive down the road, Wacom's made it easier to replace it by adding a nice little door along the back. It has an open RAM slot, so you can easily add in another 16 gigabytes. Price horse, price, price horse. horse. That's right, adding your own RAM is also gonna save you a few bucks. There's also a camera along the back. In the previous version, that was a 3D camera. They're not including that into the high-end version of the Mobile Studio Pro this time. That's gone, and in its place is an eight megapixel camera. Along the front, you still have a camera. That one is five megapixels. What makes the Mobile Studio Pro so appealing is the word mobile. There are other computers that use Wacom's tech, like the HP ZBook I reviewed last year, but this one is the pure, undiluted Wacom Pro Pen 2 experience. This thing is a Cintiq that you can unplug and carry it around. You can take it anywhere. Unlike other competitors, like the Surface Pro, this really isn't built to be an ultra-mobile device. This is heavy. It's 4.7 pounds. It's also missing a detachable keyboard or a keyboard cover, like the Surface and many of its other clones have. You can connect any Bluetooth keyboard or connect a USB keyboard, and, and Wacom even sells one, but it doesn't connect to the device like a cover does. I don't see that as a bad thing. I think it's cool that there's a computer out there that says, I am for creating and only for creating, and if you don't like it, you could go home. I suggested to Wacom that that should be their new slogan. I'm still waiting to hear back. For illustrators, what holds the Surface back is that it's a computer for everyone, but it's a computer for everyone that you can draw on. So it's fun to haul around and draw on from time to time, but the pen does have some limitations. But if all you're doing is drawing, that's where the Mobile Studio Pro excels. That's all it's for. The other important part of any mobile device is battery life. How is it here? Well, uh, I was getting like two and a half to three hours out of it. It claims to have about 5.5 hours, but that's using the industry's standard battery test where they don't do anything fun. Two and a half hours to three hours is what I would bank on. I was turning up the brightness and using Photoshop, so I'm obviously going to run down the battery a lot faster doing that. But that's how I use a computer. I say that if you plan on using this eight to 10 hours a day, which for this price, I would assume you are, it's gonna be your daily driver. You're also gonna to wanna to be working in a place where you always have access to a power outlet. You will hear a lot of illustrators talk about parallax. That's the difference between where the tip of your pen is and where the cursor appears on the screen below it. Oftentimes with these kind of tablets, the further you get from the center of the screen, the more inaccurate the pen becomes. But even in the far corners, this was really spot on for me. This is partially because of the calibration and partly because Wacom has really reduced the thickness of the glass and the screen below it. This is called a laminated or bonded screen. There's very little difference from where your stylus is and where the cursor appears underneath it. Running through my basic drawing tests of diagonal lines, I was looking for hiccups while drawing circles, and it passed. It was, it's great. It's a Wacom pen. This is exactly what we expected. Fast hatching lines look good. Tilt and rotation, check. As expected, the pen performs exactly the way you would expect the Pro Pen 2 to perform. Is there pen lag? Yes, there's pen lag. And how much really depends on the program that you're using. On the desktop, this is pretty much what I expect. This is one area where the iPad Pro pretty much has everything else beaten to a pulp. I should also point out this is much more pronounced on camera when I'm filming it than it is in real life when you're actually drawing. We also got hotkeys. I love physical buttons. Such a big part of my workflow, especially on a computer like this that doesn't have a keyboard. The buttons are good. They're totally customizable. You can change them on a program by program basis to suit your needs. That little ring thing right there in the middle, it's great for changing brush sizes, zooming in and out of your drawing, that sort of thing. When drawing, I didn't really miss the keyboard and all those shortcuts once I got everything set up and working the way I wanted it to work. There are a couple cons to drawing on this device. The first is the touch screen. Its palm rejection is good, but it's not perfect. And here's the thing, the, the problem with palm rejection that works 95% of the time is that still means it's really annoying 5% of the time. Sometimes it's minor, like, oops, I left a little mark with my palm that I'm gonna have to erase later. Sometimes it's major, like, oops, I switched to layer and I didn't know I switched to layer and I just spent 15 minutes inking on my pencil layer and now I gotta redo it all. So yeah, palm rejection that works 95% of the time still isn't that great. Wacom clearly knows this frustration and has made it very easy to toggle touch on and off. By default, it's set to one of the hotkeys along the side. And obviously you can toggle it on and off with any of the buttons if you want to go in and customize that. I really liked it. That way I could toggle it on and off and I can pinch in and out to zoom or pull up a keyboard or do some of the nuanced stuff and easily toggle it back off when it was back to drawing. Another thing about drawing on a really powerful computer like this is that uh, it gets warm. Well, 
uh, hot sometimes, really. This affects some parts of the screen more than others, but expect to be resting the palm of your hand on a warm screen for most of the time that you're drawing, it's especially along the lower center portion of the screen, probably where my palm rests the most. Now, even though it was pretty heavy, even with the stand attached, I found it to be pretty comfortable to just set on my lap and use to draw with. I'm a weirdo. I like taking things out of my office and drawing on a nice, comfortable couch. It's time for the lightning round. There's so much to mention here, so I'm just gonna run through a bunch of stuff that didn't fit in any other part of the review. The speakers are just okay. Well, maybe even a step below okay. The good news here is bucking the trend of 2019, Wacom has kept the audio jack right here along the side. We've got three USB-C ports, and not only that, but they all support Thunderbolt now as well. But something to keep in mind is that one of those ports is probably gonna be taken up by your power source for a good chunk of the time that you're using the device. There's this handy dandy pencil holder which you can pop into the device so you can plug in your pencil and hold it as one does. Fan noise is a thing. I wouldn't say it's loud. I'd describe it as medium. So it's definitely not quiet. You're definitely going to notice it and hear it, but it's not like super loud, if that makes sense. Medium right? The device is called a 16. That's because the screen itself is a little under 16 inches if you go corner to corner. But here's the thing, there's a lot of extra space. Part of it is for the buttons, part of it is for extra room so your hand isn't always falling off the edge. So expect to be using like a larger laptop bag to haul this thing around and not going to fit in a 15 inch standard laptop bag. The stand, it's good. It has three positions. I was a little unsure of it at first, but it was pretty solid when I was using it. You can plug this into your computer and use it as just a Cintiq and ignore or the computer part of it. 16 inches is the Goldilocks size, at least for me personally. If you go down to like 13 inches, I find the interface gets kind of small and it can be kind of hard to hit some of those touch points. 16 inches is big enough to hit all those, but also small enough to fit on your desk and move around and get out of your way when you don't need it. If you go any bigger than that, it takes up your whole desk. There's a fingerprint reader here for logging in. It's right here in the middle of the touch ring. Also a micro SD slot along the side. Yay! The back of this thing is a fingerprint magnet. Yeah. It didn't stay pristine for long. This is designed for one thing and one thing only, and that is power. Every computer is designed to make trade-offs. It trades off one thing for another thing. And in every instance, this computer trades off mobility, it trades off battery life, it trades off all of those things for power. So you can say the battery life should be better, but then again, you're getting all that power and it's mobile. You can say that it's too heavy, but then again, it's powerful and still mobile. You could say that it costs more than the elevator I keep my horses in, but then again, it's it's powerful. So that's what we have here is we have a digital art machine that yes, has made compromises, but every compromise they've made is to make this more powerful. It is designed for a very specific end user who needs this kind of performance. It looks like this might be the only mobile studio pro Wacom has not updated any other parts of the line. And those computers I first reviewed in December of 2016. So we're coming up on the three year anniversary. That is a long time not to update the internals of, of a computer. And since this is the only new version, it, it makes it a little bit harder to recommend some of the older versions of the Mobile Studio Pro, which is a shame because I think if you get the price of this thing down to about $2,000, it would be a fantastic mobile studio. But for now, this is what we have. So what do you think? Let me know down below in the comment section. Thank you guys for watching to the end. I always appreciate it. And I'll see you in a couple of days.